And with this national focus on all things soccer, and a lot of our kids playing it, some stars, particularly U.S. women's soccer stars, are now advocating that kids should change the way they play. In particular, that they shouldn't head the ball. You see some footage there of kids playing and some head button with the ball. They think that that shouldn't happen until they're at least 14 years old. To weigh in on this controversy, I'm back with Bruce Murray, a retired U.S. Soccer Hall of Famer who played in the World Cup, and also Rob Simulcare of NBC Sports. Bruce, you've got really strong feelings about this. Your soccer career actually ended as a result of a concussion, correct? Yes, yeah, correct. Um, I do have strong feelings about it. Um, I think the girls are on the right track. I'm not sure about the heading the ball thing, mm -hmm. but uh, they definitely have to do something. Uh, FIFA has to mandate uh, wearing the the headgear like rugby players. There's, there's a very uh, simple solution. It's six ounces. It doesn't cost very much, and it absorbs some of the blow from heading the ball and also the, the direct impacts. And Bruce, you've also got a personal connection to this um, because you run a soccer camp for kids ages 12 to 15. And that's right in the age range that seems to experience the largest numbers of sports-related concussions. Uh, yeah. What do you do to safeguard them? We, we discourage heading the ball uh, as much as possible. Um, we do, if we do head the ball, it's in a very tight, confined quarters. Um, but I encourage all parents, to, youth players, go out there and try on this headgear. Um, it's really something you should you should think about um, for your future. Rob, it seems like we're actually seeing some action in terms of practical, maybe even legislative solutions to this. 250,000 kids visit the emergency room for sports-related brain injuries every single year is the latest set of numbers. And now Indiana became the first state to actually require high school football coaches to take training on how to deal with concussions. Do you think all of this signals that we're at a turning point in this conversation? There's no question about it. I mean, you, you, it started from the top in a lot of ways with what's been going on in the NFL and the conversation that's happened there around concussions. And I think it's worked its way down the ranks. And now you're seeing more and more parents, more and more coaches, more and more state athletic associations realizing that concussion awareness and protocols are simply fundamental to any sport, not just football or contact sports, but sports that we think of as safer non-contact sports. Mm -hmm. Concussions are a risk in any sport where there is running, where balls are flying through the air, where there's any possibility of contact, and parents are being more aware, coaches are being more aware. This is an incredibly important thing because, listen, sports are important. Kids need to be playing these sports, but we can't have kids having their futures adversely impacted and their, mentally, their mental capacities impacted long term by concussions, especially undiagnosed concussions, which are more likely to reoccur when they're not diagnosed. Right. That 250,000 a year number of kids in the ER with concussive injuries is just the reported one. That's right. There are a That's whole right. lot more. It's the tip of the iceberg. And honestly, this is outside of the bailiwick of the usual issues you expect on this show. But so many people on our team, particularly parents, really had those fears you're talking about. So it's an interesting moment for this. We may see some changes even as this sport becomes more popular.